And I hope if it hasn't happened yet in this class or somewhere else, I hope it happens today. You've got to get over this stupid notion that is so predominant in Christianity today that grace is forgiveness. It's not. It just isn't. Grace is life. Grace is resurrection. Grace is receiving life to live. Grace is a power that transforms us to be not dead, but alive, not doing sin, but living his principles. That's what it means to be raised to life. We're dead in sins. He raises us to live to do what is right. Does that include forgiveness? Of course. But grace isn't forgiveness. Grace includes forgiveness. Big difference there. Big, big, big difference. Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> and, and I beg you to go home and read from chapter 1, verse 1 to the end of chapter 12, chapter 4, the whole thing, the whole book. And just really focus on it. Read it and reread it. But in chapter 2, we're skipping the first part, verses 1 to 10. First 10 verses. I want you to notice something here. And you he made what? Alive. Alive. Who were dead, in what sense? In, in transgressions and sins. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh out of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy. Now, by the way, in those three verses, what is he saying was our condition? <clears throat> this board is never big enough for me. You've noticed that, haven't you? Okay. Okay. Um, we're looking at Ephesians here. Uh, what is it? 2, 1 to 10. All right. In these first verses, what we see is that we are dead in sin. What else does he name? And what does that mean, children of wrath? Evil. 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 Angry. Doing bad. What does the wrath of God do to people of wrath? I heard another word besides what you said, Linda. Did somebody else say something? They die, don't they? When God's wrath is finally meted out upon the sinful condition, all those that were sinful will be non-existent. Life ends. So not only were we dead in sin, God's wrath or the consequence of sin will cause us to be eternally dead. But he calls us, in this circle of life, he calls us dead already. We're the living dead. Isn't that interesting? Now, this is the condition of where? Where do you find people like this? Planet Earth. There's our world right there. Everybody in it is right here. And in 6,000 years, how many exceptions to that has there been? Very few. 
Very few is real close. That's real close, but your number's too high. So you gotta give me a smaller number, Linda. How many has been an exception to this? Enoch. No. Jesus. Only Christ. Only one. Never was he a part of this. Oh, okay. The rest were and were saved from. But only one has never that has lived on this earth has not been a part of this. He actually lived here. He was one of us, but he wasn't like us. You with me? Okay. Adam came in without that, but fell into it. Verse 4. We're going to read 4 to 6. But... Now remember, but is a what in speech? It's a transition, transitional word. So you hear something, and then you hear but, it means, okay, what's to follow isn't like what came before. It's going to be different. So we've been talking about people that are dead to sin, or dead, they're living in sin, they're children of wrath, but, verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy... Because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in, tr in trespasses, made us what? Alive. Alive. What's the next word? Together. Together with Christ. Parentheses. By grace you have been saved. There's how he did it. And raised us up together. Don't miss that word. Together. And made us sit what? Together. 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 Where? In heavenly, places. in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, wait a minute here. <clears throat> what we're looking at now is something else that has happened. What we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we were made alive. We were, what? Dead. Now we're made alive. With who? With Christ. Now that's interesting. And what do you call that? He called it grace. Which, Linda, you're right, that's salvation. That's what it is. Okay? It says that he did what to us? He raised, raised us up. Okay? With who? With who? What does that mean? Where is Christ? He's in heaven. He's in heaven. He's here. He's and he's here. Yeah. Mm hmm. But he actually raised, raised us up with him so that we actually can live like him. Oh, back up. To verse 5. Even when we were dead in, trans in trespasses, Made us what? Made us what word? Alive. 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 What are we here? In this world, what are we? We're dead. Dead to what? What is he referring to? We're dead to this. We're not involved with God's character and God's nature. We don't have his power. We're not communicating with his nature, with him. We're not following the principles of his life. We're dead. We're in trespasses. We're in sin. We're violating the principles of the God who created us and wants to interact with us. We're dead. Then grace comes along. And I hope if it hasn't happened yet in this class or somewhere else, I hope it happens today. 
you've got to get over the stupid notion that is so predominant in Christianity today that grace is forgiveness. It's not. It just isn't. Grace is life. Grace is resurrection. Grace is receiving life to live. Grace is a power that transforms us to be not dead, but alive, not doing sin, but living his principles. That's what it means to be raised to life. We're dead in sins. He raises us to live to do what is right. Does that include forgiveness? Of course. But grace isn't forgiveness. Grace includes forgiveness. Big difference there. Big, big, big difference. It's a gift. It's a gift. When you see this word right here, raised, what we're talking about, what Paul is talking about is the contrast. Here we're dead in our relationship with God, dead future, dead to God now, dead to anything that's eternal and, and lasting. We are temporarily having our hearts beat, but we are spiritually dead. When Christ comes through His grace, we are raised to life. That means to live a whole different bunch of principles. You're giving Christ righteousness. That's right. All right. So what we're really seeing is, or what we're really saying is, is that here is another world. What world is this? This is, where is this one from? Who's in charge of this one? This one? God, Jesus, Christ, whichever term you want to use. Question. Did I make a mistake in overlapping these two worlds? Say that last part again. We live in this evil world, but we come out with Christ. Being part of the Aha. Uh -huh. So heaven, part of heaven is on earth? Yes, because we are here on earth. And God is on earth. How many of you have accepted Christ as your Savior? And you are experiencing His grace, okay? Every one of us. Are you living a part of heaven right now? Yes, Absolutely! You passed from wrath or death to life. You're alive. Now, I want to throw something at you. I hope it doesn't bum you out too much. There's a psalm that you all know. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. M must I admit my ignorance? It just didn't register to me what that was even talking about until a week or two ago. The valley of the shadow of death. What is death? To this person, it's what? Eternal. To this person, what is it? It's a shadow. Is the shadow real? No. Does a shadow have a heartbeat? No. Does a shadow live or is it dead? It's neither. It's a shadow. It, it's, it's the missing light from an that is formed by an object. The light that shines on the object, it's just the shadow of where that object is. But it isn't the object. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not dying. I'm not going to die. 
I'm living heaven. It's just a shadow of it. It's a figure of it. My body may die for a short time, but then I'm going to be resurrected. I'm going to live forever. It's, it's not death. For you and I, we're not dying. It's a shadow of it. That's all it is. In other words, though I die on this earth, it's only a shadow of what death is. I need not worry. So if we live in this world and God has a, <coughs> excuse me, a way of giving us grace and we are now living the heavenly life here on this earth for a short period of time, that the majority of our living will be in heaven, in another world, on this earth, of course, but with the <coughs> death gone, the majority of our life will be in a perfect world. But it starts here. It's happening here. Have you ever felt like you were a guinea pig? I've had people ask me, why have I got to be just a guinea pig for the world? Yeah. My answer is, I'd rather be the guinea pig than the rat that he ate or whatever, you know, the lettuce that he ate. <laughs> At least you got something, right? If I'm born on this earth and have the chance of this, why am I complaining what it's for? I get the benefits. I mean, come on. But you know what? There's a purpose. I'm going to erase this word so I've got room to write in a moment. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. Let me back up to verse 6 and raise this up together, made us sit together, where? In heavenly, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, that, now before, between verses 3 and 4, we had a transition. The word that, in this case, is used to say, here's why, here's the outcome. Here's what follows. Here's the purpose. That in the ages to come, eternity to come, He, which is who? Christ, might what? Show. show. Feel like a guinea pig? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That He might show the exceeding riches of what? His grace in His kindness toward who? Us. Us. Who else has gotten so much kindness from God other than these guinea pigs? Yeah. Hallelujah! Actually, we are guinea pigs. We really are. Let me read it again. That in the ages to come, in his, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. In other words, he wants to show the universe the great riches of the kindness of Christ. And he does it through us. He wants to show it through all eternity in the future to all the other worlds that are out there. So here's all these worlds all throughout his universe. And he's going to have in his kingdom, in the universe, in the world to come, in the next world, we're going to live for all eternity so that God can show his kindness to all the universe. Whose kindness? Through Christ. Why? Did not God just not destroy Satan when he messed up? 
because God was being accused. Diane, you want me to read your pedigree? You want me to tell everybody what you are? I'll tell you what you are. That's what Satan was doing. And God says, ah, 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 that's not true. And the angel's sitting there, hmm. One of them on this side says, hmm. And another one says, nah, I don't think so. And at one point, there was one over here for two over here. Well, I guess it was the other way around. Two saying, I believe that Satan's right. And one saying, no, I don't think so. And eventually, it changed the other way. So two said, I'm sticking with God's side. And one said, I think Satan's right. A third of the angels fell from heaven, the Bible says. A third. So for every good angel there is, for every two good angels, there's a demon here telling you he's wrong. There's a half as many angels on this earth that are demons trying to destroy you for every two angels that God has in heaven. If Satan could so confuse and confound angels made perfect, living in the presence of God in a perfect universe, if he could with just words confuse a third of the angels, kind of a chance that you got of going up against him. I think you better run. I think you better find somebody else to listen to. And so God has said, please said, I will show the universe. All of the beings I've created deserve to know who I am. They deserve to know my principles, who I really am, what I'm really like. They all deserve to know. And so God said, I'll show them. The only way to show them is to let the two opposite views mature. Because neither one had ever matured before. God's great love had never matured in the sense of being expressed or shown or demonstrated. It was never needed. Have, how many of you have given a kidney to your spouse? Would you do it? Yes. Well, you say so, Linda. Yes. But how does Sam know for sure? He <laughs> After he gets one, then he knows. Had God's... Had God ever had a way to demonstrate to the universe that he would love somebody even if they killed him? Not up until this point. Not up until Christ. Not up until the cross. Didn't know that. So all the worlds, the angels, they're all wondering, how would they know? And, and besides, <clears throat> with all of Satan's accusations, maybe they're right. Maybe there is a better way. Maybe there's just two cotton picking many laws. Let's just remove a bunch of those and just let people do whatever. Maybe that would be better. A lot of people think so yet today, don't they? They live with no scruples, right. no principles. Christianity has removed virtually every principle of Christianity there is. It's just do your own thing, love everybody, which is so contradictory, it just boggles my mind. If love is committing who you are and what you have to somebody else, how can you defile them? How can you work against them? How can you not help them? It's, it's just total contradiction. So, <clears throat> Satan managed to hijack this planet. And he started governing by his principles. And here's what we inherited. Here's the master. Here's God. The God of this earth is right here. This is his kingdom. He was going to set it up above God's kingdom. Here it is. You're it. You're it. You're his kingdom. Question is, are you going to abandon him and go to another kingdom? I think from what I'm hearing and what I've seen, I like this kingdom better. How about you? And the purpose of developing these two and remember, it requires this part. It requires you who were here to live this kingdom while you're here. 
there's the part that love everybody, he'll change you later, denies. It denies that God's kingdom can live and reign now. This is the evidence. This is the reward. Why these? So that God could show to the universe, to the world, for all future, in you, in your life, <clears throat> in what God did for you, in his kindness to you, he's going to put on display for the universe to see. Think of yourself 10,000 years from now. If you can't make it here, what would you be demonstrating here? Now, I keep bringing up legalism. Because I'm a firm believer that one of the greatest enemies of God is legalism. Legalism removes this whole thing. It simply says, look, you just do this and it'll save you. The vehicle of making it to the next kingdom is your grand, powerful ability to do the right thing. That doing it will take care of you. Yes. Doesn't he want to see that he has those two kingdoms also to see if he's testing us also to see if our love is for him or because we have the choices. If our love, to see if our, we have a true love for him. You could say it that way. I've, I've quit using, Diane, this thing that God is testing me. I'll tell you why. He's the rascal that tests me. Yeah. He's always trying to tear me down and, and just, well, prove it, prove it. God just says, I love you. Come on, come on. I love you. I'm, I'm not going to walk away from you, Diane. Don't walk away from me. It's not a test to God. It's just, come on, come on. It's human nature to want to leave. You know, want to leave. Yeah. And yeah. Is well, it's, it's this stuff keeps sucking us back, doesn't it? But I just don't like the idea of the test because somehow we have kind of a negative connotation to the test. You know, the teacher's going to test us like, who can I flunk? But it's not that. It's like, I'm going to give you a little quiz, and if you can make it like this, I'm going to give you a graduation certificate. Okay? So it's God just drawing us, drawing us, drawing us, drawing us. We, we can do also leave him. Absolutely. We have this, but him, by having these two, these two kingdoms to get, you know, earth, and we have him, we yeah. are being, to me, I feel we're being, not really tested. It is a test. There's no question that it's a test. See how, how strong our love is towards him. Yeah. Because we do have the choices of changing you know what really is being tested? It really isn't me. What we're testing is God's <laughs> grace. That's what he's trying to show. His kindness. So all it is, it's a matter of do I want it? Do I believe it? Do I trust him? That he could give me this instead of that? Do I really believe it? Do I want it? Will I take it? Will I hang out and trust him? You know, you're out in the middle of the ocean. You fall off the cruise ship. An hour later, they discover it. So you're way off over there, somewhere in that vast ocean. And the helicopter manages to find you. And they let down this 100-foot rope. The helicopter's way up there. And there's this little skinny rope coming down. And here you are bobbing around in this huge ocean. And you look up at that helicopter. There's nothing holding him up. The ocean is everywhere. And they want you to hang on this little rope. And you say, you know, that thing can't do it. I don't trust. I think I'll just die here. Or are you going to hang on to it and say, there's nothing else here. I'll try it. That's where we are. There is no other good choice, is there? There isn't. So we choose it. Because we don't like anything else. And God's kindness, God's grace has been so great so far. He's never let anybody down. He has always won every battle he went into. 
There is no other recourse, and this one appears to be 100% perfect. God's grace. Let's pray. Gracious God in heaven, thank you for giving to us the knowledge that we need. Help us as we make our choices to follow it and give us the power to live it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.